Okay, everybody. I have something really cool to tell you about. If you haven't heard yet about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain here. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will uh, distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one single place. Now, the way that you can do this is you got to download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and then you can get started. It's really fun. We just switched over recently here at All Too Real 2 and I'm enjoying it so far. So be sure to check it out and uh, let us know what you think. Welcome to the latest episode of All, All Too Real 2. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, my name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me as always is... Matthew Haas. Yes, Matthew Haas. I like how I say my name like a question mark. Like you're not I, sure. I, I always say I'm like Matthew, Matthew Haas, like, like I'm not even sure that's... My name, like maybe it's not. No, it is. Oh, okay. I checked just, my birth certificate. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Just making sure. <laughs> maybe just maybe you're doubting yourself yeah. because you're not really sure if that's your name or not. <laughs> oh boy, Matthew Haas. Hey, mm, wait. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, the other day I uh, talked to Ernie O'Donnell, who you may know from the. Uh, Film Clerks, Chasing Amy, Dogma, Jane Silent Bob Strike Back, Jersey Girl, Cop Out, uh, Shooting Clerks, and uh, the upcoming movie, A Hundred Acres of Hell. He's a actor, writer, producer. It was a really fun conversation. So let's uh, take a listen to that now. We'd like to welcome uh, Ernie O'Donnell to the uh, All Too interview portion of All Too Real 2. Um, how you doing tonight? I'm good, man. Things are good. I uh, was actually just watching a little bit of... Uh the 20th anniversary of uh, SmackDown. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, yeah, old school wrestler, so I wanted to see some of the old, uh, some of the old guys I'm recording, actually. Didn't the uh, Rock come back or something? Or I mean, recently, too, or something, I hear? I've heard something about he's going to come back wrestling or something. I heard that. Which is Yeah, well, he made it. A, he, he helped open the show tonight. Oh, that's um, cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's cool. I mean, he created, you know, SmackDown is pretty much based off of everything that he did and what yeah. he said but uh yeah i don't know i don't know if he'd come back I yeah mean, i don't I, know if you'll yeah if you'll wrestle or not yeah no maybe. i mean like maybe a couple rare appearances like that maybe something like that but i doubt him being on a regular schedule i don't see that he's got way too much stuff going on oh yeah <laughs> um so uh just to get started here uh, would you tell us a little bit about how you got uh, started in um acting and entertainment and everything yeah, man. I mean, it, it started pretty early for me. It was um, uh, in grammar school, actually. I did like a, we did like a mock-up uh, Amico commercial uh, in the uh, I want to say the fourth grade, third or fourth grade, and uh, I don't know. I kind of it kind of got me going, and then I got into the uh, grammar school plays, and then in the sixth grade, that's when I met Mike Bellicose. Uh, who's known to the VSQ fans as the inner row guy. Uh, 
and Kevin Smith. Everybody knows who he is. And uh, we found a love of, uh, you know, comedy and sketch comedy, especially like SNL and the Blues Brothers. And uh, we started doing a little stuff together and uh, school plays. And uh, Sir Thomas More was one of our big ones, uh, Night Before Christmas. Uh, so that's where the bug really started. Um, and then as we went into high school, me, Kevin, and Belly created a uh, comedy troupe called Scamods. Uh, <laughs> so we could, we actually, when we got to the school, there was no like talent show. There was plays. We all got uh, into the plays, but we wanted to do more than that. So we created, me and Kevin joined the social, what do they call it? The, I don't know, not the social media, but uh, some sort of club that pulls off events uh, at, in schools. Uh, so we joined that club and created a talent show so we could perform. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was, you know, Kevin had a lot of stuff in his head that he wanted to get out. Uh, and we came up with some really cool skits. Uh, like I said, in the vein of Saturday Night Live, uh, we actually got a, a, a pretty decent amount of uh, news write-ups in the local newspapers and things like that for our comedy troupe. Um, so that's where it really all started. And then once we got out of high school, I did typically what everybody else did. I went into the city and started doing a lot of background work. Uh, so I did probably 30 features of background and stand in work and things like that. Um, and in the meantime, Kevin approached me about, uh, cause he went off to film school and Kev came back from film school and, uh, told me about this script that he wrote called Clerks. And that's kind of uh, where everything pretty much took off. Yeah, and uh, for anybody that doesn't know, you played Rick Darris in Clerks, and that, you know, memorable scene at least. And uh, so uh, what would you say, like, is your favorite memory so far from any of the films or anything that you've done? Um, well, I mean, to, it's kind of hard. I mean, it's... Growing up as a kid and wanting to be, you know, wanting to be around this and uh, idolizing, I hate to use the word idolizing, but looking up to a lot of these actors and things like that. I mean, I've worked with people like, you know, uh, in the stand and field and background, but uh, in small little bit, tiny parts with people like, you know, Harrison Ford, Martin Scorsese and uh, Sean Penn and Woody Allen, you know, and I got to meet one of my idols uh, from the, one of the greatest Westerns ever, Tombstone. Uh, Val Kilmer uh, I did some stand in work with uh, with Val Kilmer and uh, it was just you know things like that are really cool but if I was to say one of the most probably one of the most memorable if not memorable moments was when Kevin gave me a call out of the blue and told told me something that he had referred to to me a few months back during a poker game he said that he had uh, got the movie Cop Out which was early on called A Couple of Dicks yeah. before they changed the name because whatever bullshit it was, was kind of <laughs> it was kind of weak I mean they could have went with it but they didn't either way so I knew it was with Bruce Willis and when he called me up and confirmed it uh, of course I said so what do you got for me? Because <laughs> he, know, he knows that me and me and Kev back in the day used to rock the return of Bruno, the Bruce Willis, uh, <laughs> in my uh, 1978 International Scout all the time. We wore that some bitch out, and uh, we lo- I mean we loved the guy. Kev cooked me with moonlighting and stuff like that, and uh, you know, of course, John McClane. Die Hard. I mean, how can any kid not like you know that that character? So when he told me that he was doing the movie with him, he said, "Yeah, I got a little something for you." <laughs> I said, oh, "Great." Um, so I'm thinking I'm just going to be in the movie. I don't give a shit what it is. I'm in a Bruce Willis movie, so I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was thinking, you know, it's going to be some pass by a one line here or there or something. But when he sent me the sides, I was acting in a scene with Bruce Willis, with Sean William Scott, 
with Tracy Morgan. And I was like, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty badass. So I went to New York City in Brooklyn, was there for about three days. And you just, the, the, the crazy thing is, is me and Kevin were just sitting between takes on the typical, you know, director style chairs in the streets of Brooklyn, New York City, watching all this movie making, you know, going on. And uh, it was just very, you know, surreal. It was like, here's two kids that grew up together, wanting to be in the movies, wanting to do things wanting to work with certain people and here we are sitting in the streets of New York on a Bruce Willis film it just you know it's kind of mind blowing sometimes yeah, and that's must probably be, must be surreal yeah <laughs> yeah it's just one of the moments that I was like you know it's just it's just it's crazy and it's great you know and at the end of the day it's you know you kind of can't take it for granted you know what I'm saying you just gotta yeah got to take it all in um and it is a lot of hard work it's a lot of hours i know people say sitting around doing nothing you're in your trailer blah 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 how hard i mean listen i've been in a carpenter for 30 years i know what hard work is yeah and i'm not saying that my job is the hardest there are plenty of guys out there doing a lot harder stuff than i am uh but i know what you know what it is but when you work on a movie set i mean anybody complains about that <laughs> they smacked upside the head because that <laughs> I mean it's awesome so that's pro that that moment is probably one of the highlights that stick in my head um also not to mention working with George Carlin uh in oh, a yeah. scene was uh, even though Kev cut me out and I didn't know till the premiere uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know you got to do what you got to do yeah so, I, but yeah I remember actually, when I saw cop out and I uh, I saw your scene and I was like elbowed my buddy in the theater and I was like I think that's Ernie O'Donnell <laughs> it's like, yeah. I was like that's cool let's see him see him in this one <laughs> yeah I yeah. was like one of the uh, yeah. you know one of the only ones or one of the only viewers few players really uh, the originals that actually you know gets to work in some other films that nobody else does and obviously that's you know because of mine and Kevin's friendship yeah um, and again I don't take that you know it just it is what it is. When he calls, I go. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't beg for a role. I don't, you know, say do this, do that. He knows I'm here. He knows when he needs somebody in a pinch to do something, I'm here. Uh, and I'm very appreciative for everything that he's done for me. And, uh, you know, it's been a 40-year uh, relationship. So, you know, those are kind of rare. Yeah, you don't have too many friendships that you have from, like, when you're a kid that last that long. I know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'm only 42, but I mean, I only have like a, maybe one friend that I have from when I was a kid, so it's kind of sad. <laughs> but, uh, uh, no. Yeah. But it just I happens. Network, <laughs> I got a strange network of friends. I got a lot of close friends that I grew up with. I mean, Mike Bellicos is, you know, my best friend in the whole world. Uh, and he was with that, you know, trio, me, Kevin, him, and the Scamaz. You know, and obviously Kevin branched off to do, you know, bigger, better things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But, you know, it's it's weird. I mean, I got a, a core, I have to say about five or six core friends that I've been with for a long time, man. You know, and that's, that's like I said, that's something rare. And it's great, you know. And it, the fact that, you know, me and Kevin stay in touch as much as we can. But, you know, he's got a busy schedule. Everybody knows. Oh, you yeah. can see on the, on the reboot tour, he's all over the place. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out a date that I can go see him. So, but, uh yeah, um... Hi, folks. This is Michael Lee Cullen II from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with manager Matthew Haas. You got promoted? Yes. Damn it. Okay, anyways, um, folks, uh, do you like the show Superstore? Well, I don't know. I asked the folks and nobody's answering well, me. Well, because they're not here. Oh, but we love damn it. it. Yeah, we love it, though. Okay, folks, if you like it as much as we do, you're really going to like the Super Story podcast, which is a podcast where Matthew and I go uh, episode by episode and give our little opinions and thoughts on it. Uh, sometimes we have guests, sometimes we don't. Um, just depends on how we're feeling. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so if you like this podcast and like our little crazy banter, then you should definitely check this out. Or I might get sad. 
and when I get sad, it gets pretty sad. Yeah. So I can't deal with him when he's sad. Yeah, no one can really. So um, yeah. So, so check out uh, Super Story Podcast right here, where you get this podcast, Super Story Podcast. In the magical world of Hearth, there are wizards, there are sorcerers, and there are magi. And none of them know what they're doing. That's how the best spells are discovered. Throw it at the wall and read the tea leaves. Or, or scorch mart. Witness the wonders of magic, science, and property damage in a radio drama of phantasmical proportions. Face my mastery over the elements! <laughs> Magus Elgar. Now available for download wherever audiobooks are sold. Listen to the first three episodes for free on YouTube. I know you, you've talked about working with uh, George Carlin and Val Kilmer and uh, Bruce Willis and everything. Who, uh, like, when you were growing up, besides them, like, inspired you to want to be an actor? Um, well... There's different, there's different sides of that. I mean... Obviously, growing up, Sean Connery was, you know, James Bond when I was a kid was the man. <laughs> so it was like, that was the greatest thing ever to watch, you know, the whole uh, James Bond saga. I mean, but there was a point in grammar school at OLPH where Kevin approached me because he, he used to leave school and go to uh, movies with his dad. Uh, which I was very jealous of. Uh, he came back to me the next day and he goes, listen, James Bond ain't shit. I was like, what? What are you talking about? James Bond is <laughs> And he goes, listen, Indiana Jones. I was like, what? He goes, I just saw this movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark. You got it. He is... So I was like, I was like, there's no way, man. There's no way. <laughs> that, and I went and saw Raiders. Holy shit. That's one of the, that is one of my, in my top three movies of all time. And to actually be inspired by Harrison Ford, uh, I think he's, you know, a great actor, a great guy. I've met him a couple times. Um, he's a carpenter. He was a carpenter himself. Um, he probably inspired me a lot. Uh, in a weird way, John Travolta. I mean, I love a grown up Grease, Saturday Night Fever, um, anything that Travolta did back in the day. I mean, of course, when he came back with Pulp Fiction, but I've always been a big fan of Travolta. He's on my bucket list to work with. Hmm. Um, and, uh, of course, the man, uh, De Niro. And, you know, Raging Bull is one of my best movies that, you know, hands down, one of the greatest movies ever made. Um, and then the last and final one is probably Denzel Washington. Denzel is, I mean, I mean, you don't get any much better than Denzel. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got to work with him on the siege uh, as an FBI agent. I had no lines, but I got to be in the room with him and during the meetings and stuff like that, and just to watch that man operate and all the different techniques he used for every take. It's like going to school, man. Mm-hmm. You know, so those are the kind of guys, the kind of cats that I, I really, uh, you know, gravitated towards. So, um, what is your uh, favorite film of all time? Just curious. <laughs> uh, well, oof. I get asked that quite often by friends and stuff like that, and that's a hard one for me to pick. Yeah. Uh, I kind of there's. There's a couple movies that I have to always watch anytime it's on TV. Regardless, I'm not talking of, you know, every guy watches The Gladiator or, or Shawshank Redemption or, you know, Jaws, any kind of movie like that, or Rocky. You know, you, yeah. the guy watch them, you can't turn them off. <laughs> um, but the movie that I, I, I just love, because I'm a huge fan, is I've watched The Blues Brothers, I can't tell you how many times. I, I, it's even though it, most people don't think it's the greatest movie or this or that, I'm just a, I was such a huge fan uh, of John Belushi uh, and Dan Aykroyd, and I'm a, I'm a blues guy. I like the blues. Blues Brothers is one of my tops, and of course, like I said, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, and that's you know it's surprising. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean I like Star Wars, but if you if you put Star Wars up to Raiders of the Lost Ark, I'm always going to go for Raiders. 
Yeah. Um, but I mean, of course, I love the whole Star Wars stuff and things like. I mean, there's so many things, but those two really stick out. Uh, and I'm a huge boxing fan, so of course I do like you know Rage and Bull. Like I said before, is a it's just a great piece by Scorsese. Yeah, I, I love uh, I love the Blues Brothers. I watched it a bunch as a kid. I had a Blues Brothers poster right above my bed in my bedroom. So yeah, right. I, I I understand that love. <laughs> for sure yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of funny a couple months ago i was uh you know because periodically i collect blues brothers uh, memorabilia um and periodically i go on e- ebay and stuff like that and you know just look to see what's out there and i rolled across a poster that i haven't seen since kevin's bedroom <laughs> kevin had this blues brothers poster in his bedroom when we were kids that i was like where'd you get that man oh, i love that i gotta get one of them I could never find it ever. <laughs> a couple months ago, I found it on eBay. Oh wow! So I, I, got, I snatched it up. It's an original. So and it wasn't that much money. I don't know. It was maybe forty bucks, fifty bucks. Yeah. I got it, took a picture of it, and sent it right to Kev. And I said, "Do you remember this?" And of course, you know, he was like, "Fuck, man, where'd you get that?" Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> uh, you know, we all love that. And I had, I had a, I had shit. Remember? I don't know if you remember. Remember the big, huge uh, posters they used to do full size? I had the full size Arnold Schwarzenegger commando poster. <laughs> that was another big one. Yeah, I used to have uh, random posters I would get, and I, I love, I love that. I'm my the weirdest one I ever had was a uh, Kenny Rogers the Gambler poster that I used to have hanging in my room really? for some reason. My uh, my my cousin like had my bedroom before me, and she had it hanging up, and I just left it there, and I just had it there for years, <laughs> just as a weird conversation piece. So. Yeah. But, um, Kenny Rogers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, wow. The um, what uh, what are you like uh, currently like watching or listening to that you would recommend to anybody listening or anything that you know? Um, well, I just got done watching uh, season two on Netflix of uh, Mine Hunters. Oh yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, first season was absolutely great. The second season was good. I didn't think it was as good as the first, no. but still, still really good. Um, I started on Kevin's recommendation. I started watching. I think it's called The Boys, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I started watching that. I haven't gotten through it all yet, but so far I like it. Um, I watched. Uh, I just got done watching uh, a couple weeks ago Ozark with I Jason. Have, I have yet yet to see Ozark. I hear it's awesome though. Yeah, man, it's it's I yeah I watch I picked it up a couple of years ago and I started watching it and I fell off, but then I picked it back up again and I was like, damn, I mean, it's really good. Yeah, it's a really good show. Yeah, the um, the boys is good for sure. I I had to watch that because uh, the uh, showrunner on that Eric Kripke is actually a hometown boy here from uh, Toledo, oh, yeah? the Toledo right. area. Yeah, so yeah, I I met him a couple times. He's a great guy, but yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's so many shows out there, man. It's just it's crazy. You can't, you can't get you can't get them all. I mean, it's just no. It's, I don't have time to watch them all. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, you know, everybody, I all everybody keeps recommending things to me, and I'm like, yeah, maybe in like five years I'll watch that. <laughs> yeah, I I did watch because I'm a I'm a, also a, a big Bruce Lee fan because uh, I used to watch Kung Fu Theater back in the day. Uh, also, um, The Warrior. Uh, I believe it's on Stars. The Warrior, or no, Cinemax. Sorry, uh, yeah. Cinemax. Um, the Warrior was really good. I enjoyed that. But you got to be into, you know, you got to be into kung fu and you know martial arts and stuff like that. But you know, yeah, I you know I like a lot of different stuff. You know, um, what do you uh, um, what advice would you give to anybody that might be interested in getting into acting or anything? Well, oh shit, man. I mean, back, you know, back when, you know, I was trying to get into it, it was so much different. I mean, now it's, I don't want to say it's easier, but there's a lot more venues, uh, especially with, you know, social media and streaming sites and things like that. And if, if I would tell anybody anything, and, I, you know, I recently just did this myself in the last couple of years uh, do something yourself I mean don't don't wait for anybody I mean if, if you want to do a role a part 
or get something out of your out of your head. I mean, go out there and create something. I mean, go go make a movie, go make a short, go make a documentary. Uh, you know, get that thing out there. It's it's not that much to do it nowadays. Everything is pretty easy, and uh, you and just work. Do whatever you can do. I mean, if it's background stand in uh, stand in work, uh, just to be on the set. I mean, being on a set, you can learn so much stuff. I mean, that's what I was saying before. You don't complain. You sit there and you, you absorb. You absorb everything you're watching, the camera guys, the gaff guys, you know, the lighting, everybody that's doing something, you watch it uh, and absorb it because you're going to remember it and you, it's going to come in handy one day. Um, but, you know, if you're an independent actor and not in the union, just do whatever you can. Grab any role, audition for anything. You may suck most of the time because most of us all suck doing auditions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's really, auditions are tough. I mean... I've been on a few lately in New York, and they give me two, three words, two, three lines, and that's it. It's like, well, what am I going to do with this? Yeah, how do you sink yeah. your teeth into that? <laughs> I mean, I literally went to New York City two weeks ago for two lines. One line was one word, and the second line was three words. <laughs> and that's it. I was walking out. It was The scene was me walking out of the diner as a cop, saying something to the chief who was in the booth. And that, I'm like... You know, do you want anything? We, you know, I tried a couple of different things. And they're like, oh, thank you. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you never know what somebody's looking for. <laughs> you know, but the thing is, you can't you can't get discouraged. Yeah, you can't. I tell these people, you just can't get discouraged. Just you keep doing it. You keep doing it because things come back around full circle. That person that you met that day that didn't use you or. Or you were with them for two seconds, might remember you for something later. Or you might meet them at a party somewhere or a function or an event. And they're like, oh, you da blah, blah, And things happen. I tell people that all the time. Don't turn stuff away in the entertainment business. I mean, of course, it's got to be something, you know, legit. Yeah. You know, that's the other thing. You got to make sure these things are legit. Uh, and if they're legit and the guy, you know, are passionate about it, you know, do it. Just, yeah. just get there and keep doing it. Don't get discouraged, man. You know, I I sat on my ass for years uh, working and working and working in construction while all my friends were saying, why aren't you doing more stuff? Why aren't you doing more stuff? I mean, you're, you know, your friends are Kevin and he can help you out and this and that. And, you know, I'm just like, listen, I really don't want to bug Kev about all that stuff. You know, when I'm ready, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And I turned 50 and I was like, screw it let's go you know i started doing it so i produced my own horror movie uh two years ago which is coming out in a couple weeks with my buddy jason kerner uh called 100 acres of hell so i got that coming out and uh and then i created my own short i did a short just brought it to a festival i got an animated sitcom i'm working on so Screw it. I'm at that point now where I'm just doing anything. I'm throwing everything at the wall, brother, and see what sticks. Yeah. I mean, I think you that's know? good advice just to go out there and do something. I mean, because uh, I mean, that's, that's what I've been. I mean, I'm a, I'm a filmmaker myself, and it's just what I do, you know, is I just go out there and do it when I can. I've, I've been, yeah. I took a couple years off, and I'm just like now I'm getting back into it, and I'm just like regretting taking those two years off. <laughs> so. Yeah, man. I, I, I tell you what, I wish. I wish I would have started, you know, earlier, you know, in my 20s and 30s. It just, it was, again, it, there was not anything accessible back then like there is now. If you wanted to do something, you had to go to New York or you had to go to L.A. If you wanted equipment, you had to go rent it. Nobody had cameras. Only buddy, you know, somebody was lucky to have a VHS camcorder if you were lucky. Yeah. Uh, but now it's just like. You can use your iPhone. You can use, you know, anything. It's doing sound, music, your computer. It's so much easier now to do stuff. So there's no excuse for anybody not to get out there and do something mm -hmm. if they really want to do it. Yeah, usually it's just your uh, your fear or your, uh, yep. yeah, holding you, you back. <laughs> yep. And I, you know, you got to get to a point where, you, like I said, you just throw things at the wall and see what sticks. And you're going to put some some shit out there and you're going to put some good stuff out there so you just keep doing it it'll come it'll you know but you got you know you just got to stick to it and be passionate 
and don't listen to the haters, man, because there's a lot of haters out there. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, when I watch somebody's film and it's not that good, it's like, ah, uh, you know, it's not that good, but at least he made a film. You know, at least he went out there and did it. It may not be great, but at least, you know, he's doing a lot more than these other people are doing. So, got to give credit where credit's due when it comes to that. Yeah, I love the people that don't do it, and then they just, you know, criticize other people oh, yeah. that do it, and you're like, uh, what have you done? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. What what have you done? Uh, you're you're nobody, and uh, well, no, you know, maybe I am nobody, but you know, I've I've done a lot of stuff in in my years, and met a lot of people, and I'm still here, and I'm still doing it, and so <laughs> must say. So, um, the the final fun question I like to ask people is, uh, what is your guilty pleasure movie? Like mm. something you're afraid to admit you like. <laughs> wow oh that's a good question mm, a guilty pleasure movie oh god you got me there boy oh. uh, now is this one that I have to have watched multiple times or or just something you something you enjoyed that you're almost like embarrassed to say you liked it well, I mean, like I said before, I'm a Travolta fan. I, I can't tell you how many times I've watched Grease. I mean, some guys, you know, don't think that's kind of a great thing, but, you know. That, but, was, that was my sister's favorite movie when we were kids, and uh, I probably have seen Grease more than I care to admit. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I, I interviewed uh, Eddie Deason, who played uh, Eugene in that uh, a few oh, yeah? weeks ago. Yeah, he was. He's a. I had to tell him that. Uh, yeah, I watched that movie more than I probably wanted to admit. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I, I, I got. I mean, I love that movie to death. Yeah. I mean, I also played Danny Zuko in high school. Uh, <laughs> nice. In the play. Yeah, Kev Kev was Kaniki. Is... <laughs> <laughs> Do you imagine that? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you should have seen him dancing on stage, boy. Oh, it's great. It's leather <laughs> so good. I can, yeah, I, I can see you as Danny. I don't know if I can see Kev as, uh, as Kanicki, but I guess it would work, yeah. <laughs> pulled, I'll tell you what, man. He pulled it off. He pulled it off. He, he'll never say that he's a great actor or nothing like that. And, you know, none of us really do, but he he went out there full bore, bro. He, he did it. <laughs> he didn't give a shit. And, you know... And back then, Kev was real conscious of his weight. You know, he was it, it was tough for him. Uh, but he went out there and did it. I mean, I give him props, man. He did a great job. It was fun. That's a, that's that's a memorable uh, a memorable uh, evening, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> hey, folks, this is uh, Michael E. Cullen II um, from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with Matthew Haas. We just wanted to tell you about our great, great podcast Super. called Super. It's called All Too Real. And on that show, what, what do we do, Matt? We, we watch biopics and then we talk about whether or not the movie matched up with the real story or not. So we, we, we a lot we, more exciting than that though. Yeah. So, 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 so we, we analyze the real story and the real story. Get it? Get it? Real. You know? Yeah, they're, they're spelled differently, yeah. folks. You can guess which one I said which way. Uh -huh. Anyways, um, so uh, sometimes we have guests, sometimes we don't. Um, but we uh, talk about great, sh great, uh, great movies like uh, Shattered Glass yes. and The Social Network and uh, A Futile and Stupid Gesture, among others. Um, those are some of the ones that we've covered so far, and uh. We're going to cover a lot more, so uh, please uh, subscribe on Stitcher, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you uh, find your great, fun podcasts, and be sure to share it with your friends. Do it. Do it. Do it. And make sure you're not afraid to get all too, too real. Bye-bye. So uh, where, where can people uh, find your uh, like 100 Acres of Hell and all the other uh, movies and stuff when, they're, when they come out that you got coming up? Yeah, so right now my well, first uh, my short is just starting to hit the festival circuit. The seventh day, uh, that's about priests and pedophile and judgment and stuff. It's really a deep kind of uh, conversation piece, which uh, I'm I'm very proud of. Uh, so that's just starting to hit the festival circuits. Um, my other movie that I actually produced 
is on Amazon Prime, right? Uh, sorry, Amazon Prime. I believe it's on Prime or definitely just Amazon. Uh, I helped produce a movie with my buddy Troy Burbank called Gone for the Weekend, uh, and that's a great throwback, uh, you know, kind of bachelor party type style. Uh, Revenge of the Nerds, you know, those comedies from back in the, you know, the 80s, 90s kind of stuff. Yeah. It's really fun. Uh, so that's on Amazon now. And then the big dog that is coming out, uh, on October 8th in select theaters and streaming platforms on October 15th is, uh, 100 Acres of Hell. Uh, that's, that's our full length horror feature, uh, that stars, uh, Gene Snitsky and, uh, the great Samu from the WWE, the both of them, and uh, myself and um, Eileen Dietz uh, from The Exorcist, um, Catherine Cochran from Terrifier and the Trauma Films. So that's that's coming out next week. Uh, they haven't exactly told us what theaters, um, but we're really excited about this. This has been going on for shit almost. Uh, seven seven to eight years now and uh it's been a long haul but uh we're really proud of this movie we've won some awards uh, through some festivals and things like that but we finally got picked up by a distributor a distributor indican pictures uh and uh yeah it's coming out a couple in next week and we're stoked man it's i just hope everybody watches it for the holidays you know for the halloween season it's a uh, it's good it's Great. you know for the money we spent this thing looks like a million dollar film. Awesome. I'll have to be sure to look around for that and check it out. Yeah, it's, um, it's all over social media and uh, a lot of the horror sites are picking it up and doing reviews of it and things like that. So, yeah, this is, this is going to be a good one. And uh, where, where can people uh, like follow you on social media or whatever, on Twitter and whatnot and everything? Yeah, Twitter, I'm, uh, you know, I'm on, it's O E O'Donnell 7 on Twitter. And I'm just, I just joined Instagram, uh, a couple of weeks ago as OD Blues. And I'm prominently on Facebook as Ernie O'Donnell. Awesome. So I, I'm usually on Facebook most of the time. That's where most of my stuff goes. Cool. But I've been trying to branch out into Twitter and Instagram a little bit more because, uh, it is good to pimp your stuff and to get things out there. And it also gets you hooked up with people like you and, you know, other people around the country, around the world, I should say, yeah. uh, to do cool things like this and to do projects and, you know, events. I mean, the, the last event I just did for Cab, the, the Clerks 3 reading. Oh, yeah, um, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, social media was a big part of that. So it's good to get out there and do that stuff because that's why we sold out instantly two nights awesome. for a great cause. So, well, uh, it was it was great talking to you. Uh, hopefully, we can talk again sometime. And uh, yeah, good luck with your films. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate appreciate you reaching out, and uh, you know, hopefully, we'll meet up one day. All right, awesome. You have a good All night. Right. You too. Take care, buddy. Bye. Okay, and we are back. Hope you guys enjoyed that uh, interview. I know I did. I did too. I loved it. Did you love it? I. No, I did. I loved it. Yeah. If you loved it so much, you should marry it. Oh, I can't love an abstract um, thing. Oh, that's right. You know. I forget sometimes. But, um, yeah. I know you do. It's okay. I know. My name's Mike, by the way. I mean, I know I introduced myself at the beginning of the show, but yeah. I'm just letting people know that I know who I am. I know I'm, I'm secure in myself. I love myself. I love the listeners. <laughs> Matt is laughing. At me because we were supposed to make this serious. I know we can't do it, guys. No. Sorry. <laughs> so we're just gonna keep riffing. Yes, um. we will. So, anyways, I love myself. Mm -hmm. I hope you loved that interview. I love Matt. Mm -hmm. I love you. I love. I love Mike. Yes, and um, we love everything. Mm -hmm. Everything, and everybody. Yes, and um, make sure that you know you do good things for each other. Mm. This world is a. Nice and happy place if we make it that way. Yeah. That's my advice for today. Um, so, so Matt, um, what should people do that if they liked this and love us and love the episode? If they, yeah, if they, if, if they are all of those things, 
um, and they, they also want to make the world a better place. They could start doing by doing that. Yeah, they could start doing that by liking our podcast on social media. Yes, slash sharing it mm-hmm. links to their friends and or followers, whether it be via Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, mm-hmm. Snapchat, if that's even still a thing. Um, there's some bullshit called TikTok now, apparently. I'm sorry, <laughs> does it mean it's completely it's tra- okay, trash t- and app here? But, it's okay, um, TikTok. Okay, yeah. if you'd like to sponsor us, TikTok. Okay, anyway, yeah. so... Um, anyway, so... <laughs> Yeah, or, or any any other you know kind of social media. Any yeah, you know, any any internet based. Um, if you want to put a thing, you know, or or if you want to put a bunch of letters together, and just hand them to your mailman mm-hmm. and send them off to your friends that say, "Hey, listen to All Too Real Too." Yeah, the old fashioned way. Yeah. Um, and also, if if you would, if you we would very much appreciate if you would go to any of the normal places you go to listen to podcasts, whether it be Stitcher. Uh, Apple, whatever, you know, just, you know, give us a five star rating or a thumbs up or any, any indication that you liked it because that will help our ratings and that will also help us get, um, listeners in the future. So you, mm-hmm. you, you won't be the special few anymore, but your family will grow exponentially. So you can always be the uh, hipster that was the first one to listen to us. Yeah. You always have yeah. that. Yeah. So, um, that's, you know, you don't want to take that. Are hipsters you. still a thing? They probably yeah. it. They might have a different name by now. Yeah, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. Post hipsterism. Yes, post hipsterism. <laughs> Anyways, um, so uh, you know, do that, and uh, you know, if you if and if you like us a lot, and you want to wear stuff that uh, you know, has our logo on it and other things, uh, you can um, check out our T Public. There'll be a link to it in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, we got a uh, cool uh T-shirts and bumper stickers and. Other fun things, tote bags. I don't know. Yeah, you know, all kinds of stuff. Maybe you know, a uh, car with our logo on the side of. Wait, I, I don't, don't think know about they, that. No, I don't think they sell those on no. there. No, no, they don't. No, we don't sell cars, people. So no, <laughs> maybe like miniature toy cars. Maybe. I mean, you might be able to buy something on there that you could put on your car, like a bumper sticker. Yeah, and then you can drive around town and let people know that you're cool. Yeah. Or that you listen to us, one of the two. One of the two, yeah. Yeah, or both, I mean, whatever. So, yeah, hope everybody has a good evening, morning, afternoon. Or a timeless um, type of existence. Yeah. If you're in some kind of dimension that time doesn't exist, you know, I hope you're enjoying listening to this. I hope they're enjoying their existence altogether because that would suck. Yeah. If they weren't in a timeless sort of realm. Mm-hmm. But, you know, so hopefully this will bring a smile to their face. Yes. And uh, have a good one. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com. Thank you.